Hello and welcome to the land of Project Nigel, where today I shall be doing my walk around video. <laughs> was very much in two minds whether to carry on doing this particular episode what well, this series of episodes because I thought maybe people aren't that interested but then I had a look at the views for last month's update and it's got 1400 views on it so that must mean that there's some value in it somewhere somebody's seen some value in it and if there's somebody seen some value in it I may as well see some value in it as well <laughs> I'm not doing this just for myself you know and besides, I actually quite like doing these videos, so maybe this one will be the last one. Maybe it won't. Each month I try and think of some slightly different way of going around the video. You know, I change the format of it somewhat. And this month at all, I'm not going to bother actually, I'm just going to walk around anti-clockwise. Or maybe clockwise. Is that, see, I don't even know this. Anyway, enough of this waffle. Let's start here with this Rover 45 1.4 this isn't my car this car belongs to Craig at Rover Revival Restorations and this car is here for me to sell but I'm not even very good at selling my own cars never buying somebody else's at some point Craig's going to lose his patience and to come along and take his own car back which would be fine because um well he, he might do a better job of selling it than I am in fact he might even get around to at least advertising it just over here we still have Harry Seacombe the Rover 600 still in exactly the same place still having done absolutely nothing still oh I left the door open as well I don't normally do that still in the same shape gathering leaves and dust and grot and stuff still needing a fuel pump and still for sale and still anticipating that maybe a man whose initials are DT might come along and buy it and as it goes he's turning up here today quite soon maybe that's why it's coming wouldn't it be wonderful if this was the last time we saw this car on one of these videos Yes, it would. Oh, who's that? Uh, oh, it's a green ZR. I can't even remember really uh, where I was up to last time with this car. It won't start. The ignition won't go on. The immobilizer can't be taken off. I have the eco code, still doesn't work. I have no interest in trying to fix it any longer because. I just seem to be up against the brick wall and because I'm not that good at these kind of things um, I just end up doing something else something I can do such as this yes yes this car here do you know what this car do you remember what this car is called no but if you said knackered horse then you'd be correct because that is what its name is and good news with this car yeah good news indeed it's up for sale as a project i can't be bothered with it any longer well i mean i can be but i mean i've got to get a cap for it because that's missing it turns over and starts and it needs a roof it needs all sorts of bits reattaching so i've put it up for sale and uh, i'm just waiting for the right person to come along who will actually buy it rather than just want to scrap it it has got a bit damp on the inside due to this roof i mean this roof may as well not really be on for the amount of rain protection it's uh, advi advising no no providing there we go there's me getting the words advising and providing mixed up not because i don't know the difference between the words but just because i use the wrong word the incorrect word that is something that happens quite often i may as well just admit it i'm useless ah that won't help either just noticed over there that the clump isn't actually done up properly but then you know that window doesn't fit properly and there's a hole there and there's a there's all the stitchings come undone here it doesn't really work but basically yeah, stop worrying about it Rhonda here is uh, kind of a success story because this car has been bought 
but it still lives here. And of course, as per previous episode, that was indeed the situation then as well. Uh, but it's just, I don't know how long it's going to be here for. I'm not really too bothered. Why? Why should I worry about it being here? It's not doing any harm. I mean, it just takes me ages to get it started and moved and everything, but it's not really doing any harm. Well, you may notice it's got different wheels on, by the way. I did that. Those are the MG straights that were on the car called Rhiannon. And Rhiannon, being a Rover 45, doesn't really suit those wheels. But this does, even though this is a Rover 45. But this, of course, is a Rover 45 with a difference. It's got some sort of personality complex, and to add some different wheels on it isn't really going to make any difference to how confused it happens to be. Now this is different. This is an MG ZT in Typhoon. Spec called Spectre. Yeah, it's called Spectre. No, it's not. I thought, I thought, the, no, the, the colour's Spectre. Why am I so confused today? Uh, for some reason, I've got that wrong. This car is called Spooky because of its colour, Spectre, Spooky, you know. You get the connection there, don't you? Actually, it looks like only one side's been washed so far. Considering cars with uh, personality complexes, this one's definitely got one because obviously it's, it's purple and it's blue. And sometimes it looks a little bit green as well. Anyway, the point is that isn't my car. That belongs to that lady called Liz there. And uh, she's uh, brought it up for me to look after. But she wants to do some jobs on it, like cleaning it, like doing some putting some bits together and things like this. And uh, I'm perfectly okay with that. I now know why I called it Typhoon, because a chap was just down here then and he spotted it and said, oh, it's Typhoon that, isn't it? And I just said, yeah. And then that, you know, word, that name, that colour just got stuck in my head. That incorrect colour, that incorrect name got stuck in my head. I could have just edited all that stuff out, but, you know, I don't do that. I'm happy to make mistakes. That's still here. Transit face. Transit face, yeah. Still taking up a rather big space in the yard. But you may know that it is definitely, definitely going to be going. I won't go as far as to say I'd be happy to see the back of it, but I'd be happy for it to go, because I can't use it anyway. I'm changing the nature of my business here somewhat. Look, here's me inside transit face. And uh, yes, as I was saying, I'm changing the nature of my business somewhat to hopefully not having knackered cars. Because although it's very, very handy to pick up things that don't work, usually they end up still not working months later. There's been a few exceptions, and I will say that Brian Johnson, who's now called Brian Johnston, couldn't have happened without this truck, or indeed Benny Jazzmags, and maybe a few others as well. But, um, oh yeah, uh, yeah, Rhonda over there. Uh, so it's difficult to say of the 600. Harry Seacombe. Actually, there's quite a lot that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this truck. But because I have it here, it means I will keep buying things that I'm just either not going to make any money on or I'm just not going to get fixed. And that is frustrating. And for the amount of use this vehicle gets, it's just not really worth my while keeping. There, now you know. But of course you probably knew anyway. What's next? Well, that isn't mine. So, Nigel. Here we have Nigel, which I washed yesterday. And now we have direct sunlight on this side. I can see a bit that I happened to miss whilst washing it yesterday. And that's really incredibly disappointing. But then it was exceedingly filthy. Lovely little precious Nigel in the past week has done an awful lot of mileage. It's been to a secret place, a not secret place, and then I've just spent all week using it as well, which is actually quite unusual for me because I'd normally use Alfie. And of course, as the weather has started to get a bit grotty, uh, it's meant that the 
car has ended up with an awful lot of dirt on it. If you want to know how much dirt, have a look at the big video that I did yesterday. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know when it was I did it. I know I posted it today, but I don't know what day it is now from your perspective. So uh, that's why. And it's never, ever been as filthy. But other news on this car. No other news. That's simply it. It's just still Nigel, just doing Nigel things. Over here and still covered up is the Rover 800 belonging to a chap called George. And uh, because there's no progress on this car either, there's not a lot of point in me uncovering it and showing you the progress that hasn't happened. Because, quite simply, there isn't any progress to not show you. Or there isn't, yeah, the, the progress is non-existent. So showing you something non-existent is uh, just the same as not showing you at all. So I may as well not show you at all. In fact, I may as well not even talk about it. I may as well not be in the video. Here is the lovely Rhiannon, which um, is sat down in the corner at the moment because something has to go down here. And for the moment, it's this. But if we look closely, we can see since the last time, it's got different wheels. It's got the original turbine wheels, which do fit this car better. And when I say fit this car better, I mean suit it better, because obviously they fit in exactly the same way. But here I am, sat inside this car, and it still smells really nice. It smells kind of uh, uh, like aftershavey, uh, but it always smells like that. There's absolutely no uh, water ingress or mould or anything dis disgusting going on, which sometimes you do get with cars. Quite often you leave them for a month and things start to develop, things start to grow, and obviously that's not pleasant. Due to the nature in which time passes by so quickly, I can't remember whether you have the following information. I did the head gasket on this car. I do know that was over a month back because uh, it wasn't running as it should have done. So I did the head gasket and all fine, except that it was leaking coolant because what I didn't do was change the thermostat housing and they are prone to leaking and this one is doing so I've got to take off the inlet manifold so I can get to all that but I just haven't got around to it yet partly because I've forgotten and uh, also because I've been doing other things but mostly because uh, I'm just lazy oh also as well the, it does have a problem with the radiator. Not the radiator, but the radiator fan. The radiator fan not kicking in. But I have done some investigation and found that the fan actually works. So it's just a matter of communications between uh, somewhere along the line where it's telling it not to work when it should be telling it to work. Next we have Boaty's Rover 25, which I've mentioned on a few occasions about it being a very, very lovely little 25. And it is, because it's mostly pre-project drive, which means it, it doesn't have horrible things on. I don't mean horrible things, I mean nice things no longer on. Except for the carpet, it doesn't have a nice carpet. But at the moment it's, um, it's without an MOT and awaiting some sort of recommission. But what it needs is a rear caliper, which is unusual because Normally, on a Rover 25, you'd have drums in the back, but this one, no, it's got calipers because it's a, it's a special model. And one of those calipers is sticking. And I actually drove it all the way up and down the yard, trying to free it, with the brake, handbrake, back wheel, firmly locked. Locked on, just dragging its ass all the way up the road. So that's another thing I've got to come back and try and do something with. Except, I don't have rear calipers, because like I said, normally, nobody does. Hiding behind these bricks in the wheelie bin here is Frank. Frank with its mismatched Honda wheels. Frank with its 8-valve 1.4 engine. Frank with its tatty bits everywhere. With its hole in the seat, with its hole in the carpet. With its um, stain on the headlining, which I did. What's happened with Frank over the past month? Nothing. What's going to happen over the next month? Possibly a head gasket. But that's only if that's what the problem is. But I don't know that is the actual problem. 
But what I do know is that if I could get this thing running and get it MOT'd, I have got a buyer for it. A buyer called Adam. And Adam is a very nice man who swears at squirrels. That is absolutely true. Now you know there is yard cat knocking about, but there's a couple of other cats. I see yard cat maybe once every couple of weeks. I saw it twice yesterday, but I was just seeing another cat today. But who I do see every day is yard squirrel. And yard squirrel is a very hungry little blighter. Whereas the magpies will steal my curry if I leave it on the bench, the squirrels will eat basically anything that's there, including chocolate biscuits. What do we see here? Well, we know it's green and it's covered up and it's covered up with leaves as well and it's um, big. You know what it is, don't you? Of course you do. Ooh, a little peekaboo there, a naughty little glimpse of what's under the cover it should stay there. Just like the Red 800, there's not going to be any progress and I've given up looking for missing celebrities inside it because it's just so disappointing when there's nobody in there. Obviously there's not going to be any progress, so there's no progress to talk about. And yet again, I find myself thinking I may as well not even mention it. But it is here. It is here, and I can't say it's not here. So, as an update, I've still got to... Hello. Cut that short. And uh, the same goes for Amy Winehouse here. But, Amy Winehouse does have progress. It always does. Every month there's progress. Every month there's something new taken off, and this month there's no difference at all. And when I say no difference, I mean there's no difference to things being taken off, because my friend Adam was down here yesterday, he's taken off some bits. The only thing I don't really quite get is um, what he did take, I thought, was all of the door seals, but that one's there, and the boot seal, but that one's there as well. And that badge. But that's there as well. What's going on? What did he take? I mean, what was that stuff he did take? Because he had a box full of things that he got off of this car. Well, it seals on that one as well. What about this side? What about this side? Oh, no, that one's gone. Right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, just a few more bits and an ever-increasingly deep puddle in the back. Yes. Now, whereas some cars end up with mice living in them, this one's going to end up with fish. That's not a huge spider, it's just a lovely little friend. There we go. Who's next? Susie Sunshine. It's unusual really that um, I keep a name like that for a car because it's definitely not the kind of name I would have come up with, even though it's obviously rather fitting. Now, unfortunately, although this has got a good roof, that probably doesn't leak. It's um, it's not looking too nice in here. That is a rather grotty, mouldy steering wheel, and there's quite a lot of water and uh, mouldy bits going on in here, which is a pity because I was going to sit inside it and tell you how much I like this car, and I do still really like it. And although it needs its sills welding up, it is my intention to have this car on the road, quite possibly for my own use next year. But I think for the moment, I may as well forget about it. Not the last car, but one of them, and that is Gladys. Gladys has been living inside recently, because after all, there is space in here. And although having a car in the lockup means there's no space, if I don't, then that means the space is wasted. I often think about this car. This is a car I would like to keep myself. If only I didn't have a Rover 45 called Alfie, which is an exceedingly nice car, but so is this. But this one's different because of its red carpet and half leather 600 seats. This car is Boaties and mine. Well, it's only mine if I sell it. But it's not mine if I don't, because then it's his. And that's rather confusing, so I'm not going to go any further into it. But what I will say is I've been gradually just doing bits of paintwork on it, making it look a bit better. But it could do with looking a lot better, ideally. A lot, lot. So I've done that boot, and I've done this C-pillar there. 
and I've done this wing polishing, clay barring, polishing, all that kind of stuff. Whilst here in the lockup, you may notice something else. It is called light. Light is very, very useful for being able to see what you're doing. And I need to see what I'm doing while I'm in here. So that um, is all thanks to a man called Senior Mustard. Beyond that, it's still a mess in here. Keyboard still lives here. Vice still lives there. Some more brake pads there. Fridges got stuff on it. There's another set of plastic drawers there for not filling up. Still stuff to organise here, still stuff to organise here. And then over here, still stuff to organise there. Those bikes are supposed to be going home. And that brings me to the other thing, the Peugeot. You might call it Project Peugeot, or you might just call it Mountain Bike. I call it unused, another opportunity, a missed opportunity to actually feel a bit more healthy by cycling and I just haven't got around to it again. This time next month I will have done 300 miles on my bike. That's what I keep telling myself. And uh, it just doesn't happen. So I need to find a way of actually doing what I promised myself. Rover 45 called Alfie. This is a really, really wonderful old car. Now up to 43,000, no, 42,000 miles. Still drives absolutely spot on, as you'd expect it to do. Still looks nice, as you'd expect it to do. Still makes me happy, as you'd expect it to do. So what's about this car? Anything new? No. Anything likely to be new? No, no, I need to put some petrol in it. But that's about it, really. I've not used it for nearly a week, that's unusual. I'll tell you what else is unusual about this one is that ever since uh, I retaxed it near the beginning of the year, once it started to get warm and I discovered that the aircon was working, I've never found myself thinking I'm going to untax that one this month and just drive something else. I've always just wanted to use it. It's just that kind of car that it just really does an excellent job of being a car. And part of my requirement for a car is not to be boring. And it isn't boring. And I'd imagine that many people would see something like this and just think, it's not even a ZS. It's only 1.6, that's boring. Look at the colour of it. Be alright if it was red. But no. It's not red, it's midnight blue and it is wonderful. And I think until the next video, that's me finished with for today. Thank you for watching and don't forget, please don't forget to do this and this as well before you leave. Thank you. Oh, there is one thing I did forget. The car that's no longer in the yard, which is, which one is it? Where's the car I've got? Oh yes, the Seat Ibiza. The Seat Ibiza belonging to my friend Carl. That's gone somewhere else. Well, it's gone to his home. So I'm glad that's gone. Is there another one as well? I mean, I keep thinking there must be another car that's gone. But no, there isn't. Oh, well, never mind. Bye-bye. Oh, look at that. I like goats more than cows now. <laughs>